One Saturday morning in a secure youth correctional facility, the youth on my unit were doing chores. We just finished a great morning group. Everyone was on task and cooperating. It was a lovely Saturday morning. Suddenly my supervisor opened the door to my unit and began to walk across the floor. He was looking for extra linen in the cupboards at the back of our unit. I could feel his anger before I could turn all the way around to see who it was. As he got halfway across our unit, a fight broke out between two youth who'd been getting along really well all morning. I felt that supervisor's anger in my gut. So did the youth. The two youth shifted their focus from each other to the supervisor, the source of the aggression. That supervisor called for backup on his radio, meaning he intended to restrain one or both of the youth and needed help. Later I found out that supervisor had an argument with the facility director just before walking onto our unit. He carried the sensations his body generated during that argument all the way from the director's office onto our unit. It was as if he was delivering visceral survival instructions. The youth's bodies picked up those visceral instructions and made the necessary adjustments to survive that threat. With the supervisor standing toe-to-toe -to -toe with the two youth who first picked up his body state, the sensation symmetrically escalated. It was seconds before the rest of the youth in our milieu were also escalated. Our unit went from peaceful to panic in under a minute. That argument between the director and the supervisor nearly changed forever the trajectory of those youth's lives. This happens every day in youth treatment settings across the globe. I'm Kelly Rhodes with Body and Behavior Institute. Any person who visits your treatment unit delivers their survival instructions to the viscera of your staff and youth. If they're in fear, anger, or anxiety, our youth and staff will be as well. In youth treatment settings, contagious emotions change how we spend our day. Contagious emotions not only increase youth's risk of incarceration, they're also implicated in the use of behavior sequence, restraints, isolation, as well as critical incidents, riots, and youth and staff injury. These events are recorded in youth's charts and are used to inform recommendations to their psychiatrist, their caseworker, and judge regarding changes in youth's psychotropic medication prescriptions, level of placement, and length of sentencing. It can mean the difference between a youth returning home or experiencing multiple placements in increasingly higher security facilities, which increases a youth's risk for future engagement with the adult system. We learned in this video that body states are the dynamic representation of that body's homeostasis, including perceived threats and rewards. Sharing body states is so important to our individual and species survival that the body has several mechanisms to share body state quickly. Mirror neurons play a primary role in shared body state. The mechanisms are mirror neurons, affective empathy, non-conscious mimicry, and facial expression. Each of these are facilitated in part by the insula, a component of the limbic system. This is Marco Iacoboni. Marco is a neuroscientist. He studies the mirror neuron system. Marco says, we humans catch emotions like we catch a virus. This is Pascal Molenberg's. Pascal studies affective empathy, which is the capacity to spontaneously feel what the other is feeling. This is Segal Barsaid. Segal's research is in organizational behavior. Segal says people are walking mood inductors, continuously influencing the moods and then the judgments and behaviors of others. 
This is Elaine Hatfield. Elaine is a behavior scientist. Elaine's research tells us contagious emotions synchronize group behaviors. Your youth treatment unit is a group. This is Willem Frankenhaus. Willem is also a behavior scientist. Willem's research tells us that kids who grow up in harsh, unpredictable environments may be specialized. He reviewed research that suggests youth who grow up in harsh and unpredictable environments, including poverty, may have better empathic accuracy. Physiological responses and emotional contagion patterns more empathically linked to a social interaction partner. So, if people are walking mood inductors, catching each other's emotions, potentially synchronizing group behavior, and the youth we work with may have better empathic accuracy, physiological responses, and emotional contagion patterns more empathically linked to a social interaction partner, what sensations are they experiencing as they go through their day in your facility? And what happens when you put 16 of them all in one small room? Shared body state, or contagious emotions, is a spontaneous biological survival process, like wrinkled tacky fingertips in water. You can't block it, you can't turn it off, and you can't ignore it. So what do you do? You change the body state. First, start where the body state is created. Increase youth's agency over the predictability of their survival resources. And second, increase youth's agency over the contagion by enlisting the group to identify the desired body state and generate and spread the new contagion. There are scientists all around the world researching contagious emotions. Here are just a few of my favorites. Marco Iacoboni. Uh, Giacomo Rizzolatti, John Maziata, Vittorio Galisi, uh, Segal Barsade, Elaine Hatfield, John Cacioppo, Karen Rudolph, Pascal Molenbergs, Jean Dicity, uh, Bruno Wicker, Robert Ares. You can tell I love them. These are just a few of them. There are many more. I placed a link to the researchers and their articles in the description. These scientists study what we experience in our treatment milieu every day. The National Institutes of Health and these other highly discerning national scientific research funders around the world see value in investing in this research, replicated research in several different scientific fields around the world that provides evidence-based research that we can apply in our milieu to make them safer and more therapeutic. If your staff and youth have told you emotions and behaviors on their unit are contagious and you needed science to back it up before you implemented a contagious emotion program in your facility, these renowned scientists around the world funded by NIH and other national funders have given you empirical research that supports what your youth and staff have been saying. I'm Kelly with Body and Behavior Institute. If you found value in this video, please give it a thumbs up or subscribe. Thanks for watching.